Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to talk a little bit more about Planet 9 and a new study that actually tries to estimate what's inside of this beautiful planet, if it exists that is, and also why it's so important to find out what is actually on the inside so we can actually discover it. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So we're going to click on this right here, which is the Planet 9 simulation in Universe Sandbox. And we're going to scroll down to Planet 9, which is relatively far away from everything else. And it's actually really dark. It's essentially almost invisible, which is uh, one of the reasons why we haven't been able to see it yet. So anyway, so there's a study that has been released like a few months ago in 2016. And it's a study by Esther Linder and Christoph Mordassini from University of Bern in Switzerland. And they basically had a really interesting analysis of what could be inside this beautiful planet. Well, essentially, what are the possible materials that it has on the inside? Uh, and the reason they did that is because they wanted to use um, simulations, computer simulations, using various materials and various composition to find out what kind of emissions the planet might actually um, emit. Essentially, what kind of a light is it going to emit and so that we can use a specific telescope to try to find it because as of now, we haven't really seen it, and we did have a very extensive telescope search called WISE a few years ago that uh, haven't really found anything, it hasn't discovered anything, and they explain why it, ha it wasn't actually able to, to find anything. But anyway, so let's start with what they used um, as a simulation and what they think is inside of this planet um, and what it may actually look like. So, first of all, a lot of these assumptions are based on the fact that we think that Planet 9 might be very similar to Uranus and Neptune, which are colloquially known as um, ice giants. And this here is possibly an ice giant that got kicked out of our solar system. We don't know why, we don't know how, but we know that if it's there, it's possibly uh, just a kind of a object that was essentially um, thrown out of the system by some other gas giants or something else that may have passed through our solar system. And so this ejected ice giant would have um, a very interesting composition. On the inside it would have obviously iron, like many other planets in our solar system. Then it would have a silicate layer, it would have water, and on top of all of this it would also have a hydrogen and helium layer. Now, in, in this game right now, it's not actually very accurate, at least uh, according to that study. And we're going to change these values just so it's, it looks a little bit more realistic. And so mass here is going to be the uh, same mass that everyone else assumes that this planet is, 10 masses of Earth. And all of this is based on the assumption by Mike Brown and Konstantin Baitikin, who um, have actually originally posted the, this, this study. And basically, um, we're going to change these values a little bit, starting with the hydrogen layer. Now, according to this new study, the hydrogen helium layer is approximately 1.4 masses of Earth. In other words, it's about uh, 12 to maybe 19% of the total mass. So it's a relatively thick, but also not that thick compared to, let's, let's just say, um, Saturn and Jupiter. Uh, but it is essentially what m would make this planet a, a nice giant, because most of the mass would actually be consistent of water. And the total mass of water here would be approximately 4.3 masses of Earth. So it's uh, quite a lot of water and it's obviously um, right underneath the, the helium and hydrogen layers. And in terms of what sort of uh, water it might be, well, um, it's very likely that because it's so far away from everything, it is probably uh, in some sort of um, hard ice format, but it's, very, it's also possible that it, there might be some sort of a liquid ocean underneath, which of course would possibly suggest that for all we know, maybe, just maybe, there is some sort of a Planet 9 life in there as well. But all of these are obviously still very wild speculations. And then underneath all of this, there is a, a solid rocky silicate core, which is uh, something that all of the planets have in our solar system and many of the moons have as well. And essentially this here uh, would be something like 2.9 masses of Earth. So it's, it's essentially, the rocky core itself is almost three times the mass of Earth. Um, Meaning that on the inside of this planet, there is something that is even larger than our own planet. And lastly, the iron core on the inside would be approximately 1.43 masses of Earth. And so altogether, this would give us 
I believe that it's 10, there you go, 10 masses of Earth, so perfect. So this is essentially what the composition of this planet we think might be. Uh, we also think that um, in terms of luminosity, it might be very similar to Neptune and Uranus, or actually, according to them, it's uh, about half as luminous as Neptune, so it would be a little bit less bright. And um, compared to other planets, or I guess compared to other gas giants, so usually we use um, Jupiter as a kind of a comparison, because Jupiter is relatively bright and it, it does actually produce quite a lot of light, uh, reflecting light and also um, light that comes from the inside because it's such a massive planet. But uh, compared to Jupiter, uh, Planet 9 would only be about 0.6% as luminous. In other words, it it's almost 200 times as dim as Jupiter. So, so Jupiter, if I were to place it right next to Planet 9, would be a lot more easily observable and a lot more bright than Planet 9. Uh, and simply because of the fact that it does produce a lot more light from the inside uh, due to its mass. And um, in terms of reflectivity of light, uh, its albedo would be very similar to Neptune and Uranus. So it's about 0.31 to maybe 0.41. So we're going to put it right between at 0 0.36, 0 0.37, 0 0.36. So this means that 36% of light would be reflected from the surface. But here's the thing. Where is that light? It's so far away. Sun is actually so far away from us. It's anywhere between 200 to up to 1,000 times the distance of Earth from the Sun, also known as astronomical units. And so because the Sun is actually so far away, there is almost no light reflected from the surface. Most of the light, actually something like thousand times more light, is actually the light that is produced on the inside due to mass again. But what kind of a light is actually produced? Well, this is actually where it gets interesting. Using various simulations and also uh, various formulas and mathematical calculations, um, Esther Linder and Christoph Mordassini were able to actually predict that the type of light produced by this type of a planet would be in sort of very, very low infrared. As a matter of fact, it's so low infrared that uh, this is one of the reasons why they say we haven't been able to see it yet. Um, so WISE telescope, which searched for all kinds of objects in the vicinity, would not be able to see it because it didn't really have the right filter. But uh, this planet would produce quite a lot of infrared light because of its mass, and also if we use the correct filter, specifically if we use uh, one of the future telescopes, uh, such as for example Large Synoptic Survey Telescope that's going to be released sometime in 2018 I believe, uh, we might actually be able to see it much easier. But as of now, we don't really have any telescopes capable of really detecting it, at least in terms of infrared light, and in, in terms of visual light, if I actually move away far away enough, you, you can't even see it. You can see the name here, but once I remove the label, it's impossible to see. This is how, how far away and how dark this planet actually is, and why we haven't really been able to detect it. And so essentially, this is what uh, the study is all about, and it's a pretty interesting study. It's kind of interesting how they were able to not only estimate the materials on the inside, but they were also able to predict the type of emissions that this planet might actually create and what kind of a telescope we might need to detect it because a lot of people are probably looking for this particular planet right now but i don't think many people many astronomers will be able to find it because we're not really using the right tools yet so hopefully by 2018 2019 or 2020 we'll be able to actually finally see it and finally confirm its existence or explain the unusual orbits of some of the farther dwarf planets and some of the farther objects in the Kuiper's Belt in some other way, because this was actually the reason why we think uh, Planet 9 is actually out there. And anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, and before we finish this video, let's actually introduce Planet Earth as a moon of Planet 9 and compare their size as well. So this is how large this planet is in comparison to our own planet. Uh, and essentially how massive it is. So on the inside of this uh, planet, there might be something that's twice as massive as our own planet, which is kind of impressive. But before we finish this video, let's actually go into the actions here and zero the velocity. We're going to stop everything and make it collide because why not? Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something from this video and you know something else, something new about Planet Nine from all of the information I've provided. Don't forget that uh, all of the stuff that I've mentioned is available in the description below, including the link to the study and the paper written by uh, 
by the astronomers from the University of Bern. If you would like to learn more about this, check out some of the other Planet 9 videos I've posted previously, and you might actually learn something that you don't know yet. Thank you so much for watching, please subscribe if you still haven't, share this video and like it as well. I'll see you in the next video, game you later, and as always, bye bye. Now if it was this bright, we would definitely be able to see it by now, even with the smallest of telescopes. That is a very, very bright object. Maybe we should just send a planet to collide it with Planet 9 so we can actually see it. That's a capital idea. Can someone go and tell NASA to start a mission of collision? Because that would be pretty cool.